I spoke to me a few years ago about before I did it the first time about getting doing it. Oh, you did this shit. He was trying to charge me like twenty thousand dollars, and I'm like, dude, I can go to a clinic in Mexico and do it like in a hospital, which 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 I did. Um, You know, so basically, basically, what it is, you know, it it resets the brain, and so however many opiates you're addicted to or, or alcohol. It just kind of like knocks it all off, and you're. It's like you're. Wait, Armand, just, just before you continue, is it done through an IV? No, no. How, how like, is it? So doing? It comes from a bark, and they put it in pills. Uh-huh. So the first time I did mine, I studied to get the best. Po- they can't do it here, so they do it in Mexico. The pe- best possible clinic to do it in Mexico. Um, they ranged from two thousand dollars to seven thousand dollars. Now, all mine. Let me let me stop you for one second because it's important to understand that ibogaine, one of the side effects could be heart arrhythmias. Yeah. So, if you throw an arrhythmia and there's no medical team there to like you know shock you or do CPR, you could die. I mean, uh-huh. and I'm not saying that's what how he Andy died. We don't know, but I'm saying ibogaine is known. To, like, like, you know, to cause arrhythmias, you know, in, in higher dosages. So that, that's why you should be doing it in the clinic, but we don't, we don't even know what happened. So I don't but, want to speculate. But, but we do, we do know that Andy had just had surgery prior to. I want to hear Armand's yeah, story. I, I want to yeah, hear right, story. Right, let, let Armand finish his story. Right. So I found the best clinic possible. I, I talked to them a lot. I asked a lot of questions. Um, and so flew to San Diego. I mean, uh, yeah. San Diego, and they came and picked me up. It was um, right next to Tijuana. Rosetta, how, what, how do you say it? Rosetta? Rosarita. 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 It was done there. It, it was a very nice house it's done in. So you stay in the house, and they do your blood work. They taper you off whatever you're on, even testosterone. They had me come off testosterone because Ibogaine uh, intensifies whatever you're on. So they said even that low dose of testosterone replacement is going to act like I'm taking like 2000 milligrams. That's what the doctor said and everything. And so it could shoot your blood pressure up. So we did my blood work and then we had to wait. They wanted me to wait a couple extra days to get off because I had to taper down because I was taking some a light doses of benzos too. And they made sure my blood work was perfect. I was able to do the, the treatment. It, I was drove to a hospital with the doctor, with nurses and you know, the, the experience was absolutely horrible. So they give you like a capsule and then a couple, 45 minutes later, another capsule. And then another, I think they're about 300 milligrams of capsule. And they, you know, they told me you're going to start hallucinating. It's a horrible hallucination. You're going to feel like you're literally in hell. Um, okay. They said, you're going to, you're going to, you know, want to throw up. You're probably going to throw up. Try to. What is it like mushrooms? Up. When you take it's like, it's like, it sounds no, like ayahuasca. It's a, like, it's a psychedelic. It's, it's a psychedelic. Like that. It's not like any other uh, the purging like the purging effect is supposed to be the purging of bad emotions and of, of, of all the negativity inside of you from a spiritual standpoint. That's at yeah. least in ayahuasca, that's what it's what it is. Yeah, right. It's like it's Don- way <laughs> hardcore, way more hardcore than ayahuasca. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so this has to be done in a, like they, they had options where you can go with a shaman out somewhere, like fuck that. Like, no way after I went through what I went through. And so you would do it and I was in the house and so they would do the treatment and they would bring the other, you know, patients back to the house. So they call the day. I'll tell you what the patients, I'll go back into it. So the patients, they would call a gray day after the day you did it. You just felt like down and just kind of like you were thinking about just like all your past, your emotions, kind of getting everything out of you from all those years you've numbed yourself from whether alcohol or, you know, opiates. So I saw the guys and they were fine. They were just kind of walking around. They didn't really eat much. And I'm like, okay, this doesn't look too bad. I asked them, I was like, have you ever treated someone my size? I was about 270 when I went there. And they're like, no, they're, we're, you're the biggest, most muscular person we've ever had. We haven't even had anybody close. That was, and of course that worried me because I did a, a, a rapid detox before up north and it literally almost killed me. I was in ICU three weeks afterwards. Um, of the same thing? Of the same thing? No, uh, no, 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 no. That, that's, here they do a rapid detox. They put you under with, uh, you know, they put you under and they shoot you up with naloxone. It withdraws you within seven hours. And I aspirated, filled my lungs and I almost died from pneumonia. I was in there, in there right. three weeks and it was, it was a bad situation. No, this is completely different. So... I went and did it, and so they gave me the pills. I was trying to hold down. I started puking, and it took literally like you, you usually start hallucinating within you know an hour, 
it took me like six hours. Like, do you feel anything? I'm like, no, nothing yet. And so it finally started hitting me. Hitting. Armand's like, can I, can I get a Percocet? And I'll... <laughs> so, you know, I was on, I was coming off a lot of, you know, a lot of opiates. And then when you get there, they, they taper you down. They start giving you small doses of morphine before you. Before oh, they you do? Really. Okay. Okay. That so they sense. really, they really take care of you. I mean, this is not something I mean, can do in person. Like this is like, it was very, very professional how everything was set up. The problem was with my treatment, like I started puking too soon and I could not keep it down. There was no way it was, it makes you. So why wouldn't so, they, why wouldn't they IV it? Put it in an IV. If you, if for people you. Stuff, you throw up, it'll kill you. That's a good reason not to do it that way. That's yeah. a really good so, reason. <laughs> yeah. So I, it hit me like at, uh, like around seven hours, all the nurses turned to these, these demons and then, and then it takes you, to, they said, it's going to, you're going to think you're in a different world. You're not even going to feel like you, you're not going to know you took a drug because the, the, the trip is so horrible. And they said, you're going to see a lot of dark, dark shit. And basically I was just pretty much flying by these dragon wings and bodies were being dropped into like hell, like burning, burning fire. And, oh, wow. and I thought I was really there. So that went on. It felt like an eternity, but they said I only went through that process for about uh, an hour and a half, and my trip was only an hour and a half. A normal trip is about seven hours. Wow. So they were just like, we might have to repeat this again, maybe, uh, you know, the, the next week if you could come back. I'm like, no, I need this to work. And so, and then the doctor said, no, you, we, you got your trip. You know, we think it worked and all that. So after that, you know, and so as soon as they give you the Ibogaine, you stop um, – withdrawing so you don't have to take any more opiates at the time it's it's very weird for something some mechanism makes it you just stop withdrawing from the i mean you're really sick from the ibogaine so they brought me back it was like two in the morning they brought me back to the the, the house i was not okay um i couldn't i couldn't move i couldn't get up i couldn't eat sleep so they had to put an iv in me and i was passed out for two days straight uh wow. they were worried about me I would, I would remember waking up here and there, and I was just in extreme pain my whole body. Uh, I remember this Mexican guy just kept coming in there and kept shooting my ass cheeks. Like, I guess their um, muscle relaxers were like big syringes, like 5 mLs, 10 mLs of stuff. Of course, they couldn't give me pain meds. That's what I was going there to get off from. Um, <laughs> You're crazy so, going to Mexico to do that shit. You crazy fuck. Dude, <laughs> I mean, they have a lot of success there. That clinic, it helps. Like, everybody else was fine, so... I was out two days. I woke up like two days later and I'm like, what's going on? They're like, you've been out for two days straight because I, I had no water, no food. So they had to put on wow. me. They were, they were actually, they said, we're not going to lie. We were scared. We never, no one's ever, because when you have a lot of muscle, it makes a difference once you, when you do all these different sorts of treatments. You got to yeah, be right. careful you as know, a bodybuilder. Armin, Armin, not to interrupt you, but you know, before you carry on with your story, I think what's lost in this is, Dave, you've known, I mean, you're, for many many years right yeah. i know him just recently but he's always been very respectful always been very nice to me you know how um greg always says he's a good guy well he is a good guy I yeah mean, he is he, he's always been a good guy to me i'm sure to you guys too so really i don't guy. think like okay he probably needed the money why he did this but i also thought he was probably thinking he help was helping people oh no so no, no i, I don't did. think that's all he wanted to do is help people so yeah, what i'm I, saying is it's like he didn't have bad intentions this guy yeah. died but he didn't mean to kill him we, was and healthy, we still don't was... know if, if you know, there's going to have to be a very extensive, you know, investigation as to was this really the cause of death? Is it, is it definitive? You know what I mean? They, they put it on the autopsy report, but that doesn't mean that that was the real cause of death. It's what yeah, they, he didn't have the, the intention to kill him. He didn't have the intention. So how, but, you know what I'm saying? It's not. I well, want to know is Armand, have you if ever. You're, if, you're, if you're playing Russian roulette with a gun, you really don't want to kill someone, but you kill yeah. him. I mean, well, you he kill probably him. didn't I'll think finish. it's going to kill him. Wait, I no. want to know from Armand, did you, after this horrible fucking seeing demons and you're in hell and your dead relatives are coming to you and all this shit, did you ever go back to doing that shit, that the, the, like the opiates and stuff? I'm about, no? I was going to finish my story. So, yeah, I mean, so I, after that, they, they, you know, after that, they were, you're supposed to go to a different house right on the beach and recover another few days. I didn't get to do that because they were worried about me. So they kept me in a house. Uh, monitor me and it was a really nice set up place they were great people um and so after that i went to go stay with my friend up in the um up in the mountains uh, uh tele tele uh 
Telemuca. What's it called? Oh, gosh, I can't even think Macula? of it. Uh, tell, tell him Macula, to Macula. To Macula. So I went to stay with my friend up there, and I'm like, okay, I'm not having any withdrawals. I was having, and then I started having like mild withdrawals. Like just, I just felt like I had a cold and runny nose, and that's fine. I mean, that was perfectly okay with that. So I came back home, and being the dumbass, like after about a couple weeks, you know, I was still not feeling totally great. It, it was going to take some time. That's the thing with opiates. When you come off, it takes some serious time to start feeling okay again. So I was like, but you, I didn't was have, my, you didn't have the desire to use it. I mean, you weren't like jonesing for the stuff. No, right? I wasn't okay. jonesing for it, but I was hurting. Like my every inch of my body was hurting. Well, oh, that's because you can't because you weren't on any opiates. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So in my closet, yeah, yeah, I go in there and I find oxycodone in there. Yeah, so oh, I wasn't no. jonesing. So started the process all over, got back on. Oh my god. And then I did it the Ibogaine a second time the following year. This was a means partner that came to my house. I said, what happened with you and Amin? He said, you know, Amin was is charging people twenty thousand dollars and this literally should we should be charging the guy charged me like six hundred dollars to come to my house and he told me the whole deal. He goes, we buy it from this site, it's only three hundred dollars and you know and we stay there and administer it. So I was like okay so I was, I asked the guy, I was like, oh, okay, do you have statins with you? Do you have monitor, blood pressure monitor? Do you have all this stuff with you? He's like, no. And I'm like, oh, this is different from the hospital. So I was worried. And obviously my, my wife's a doctor uh, at the heart. George, hospital. you got feedback on your microphone. I'm, I'm muting you. Hey, what's that white dust all over his face, man? He looks like he just uh, went, went to a minstrel show he went to. He's oh, bullfrog. Okay. He's surfing. <laughs> Somebody Get fucking it. came on his face. Wait, I'm getting into the story. Go ahead. So, on. Yeah, keep... so he came to my house. Real nice guy. I was talking to him forever, making sure everything was set up. And then when he came here and I was like, do you have this? What are we going to do about me tapering off the clonopin load up? He didn't have any idea. And I, so I was like, shit. And so he just, he was doing something he had no business doing. So he said, I've de I've had I've got people off of it before because it's worked, but the amount a year on I've never got anybody off that. You're the highest amount of you know someone taking opiates that we're gonna do it. So he didn't think anything of it. He goes, we're gonna take three pills, three pills. So we do it, and like I said, your withdrawals stop. But I will I I didn't have that same hallucination I did in Mexico. So I don't think he gave me enough a dose like uh, the other people he dealt with. But in the middle of it, I started withdrawing like crazy. I remember I'm in my room right now. There's a bedroom right here, and there's a bedroom. I'm upstairs. It's like a I, my house is kind of like a three story kind of house, and and my other bedroom, but a guest bedroom there. So I crawled over there like like in tears, like dude, I'm withdrawing. I was sick, and he was like, "Wow, you're not supposed to be withdrawing." And I'm like, and so he gave me another one. He's like, so he was sitting there with me, like rubbing my back, like I was sick, and uh. And eventually it calmed down again. Okay. So the next day I thought he was supposed to stay with me for another few days to monitor to me. The next day he was leaving. I'm like, you're leaving. He's not like, for 600 yeah. bucks. He's not staying for only one day <laughs> for three days. <laughs> no, I paid him more than $600 oh, okay. because I wanted him to stay extra days. Because right. I was like, How much to, you know, so I paid him more than 600. I think it was around 1200. I paid him, uh, okay. uh, you know, in total because I wanted to be monitored afterwards and all this, but he was not, uh, skilled in all that. I was schooling him on Ibo game because I did it before. I'm like, do you have statins with you? you know, <laughs> yeah. So I was laughing. I was like, do you know this can this can you know have, make, cause you to have a heart attack? He goes, no, I don't think so. I go, no, it, it can. Like, and my wife's explaining to him too because right. she was on the phone when I was in Mexico with the nurses and doctors the whole time. The arr arrhythmias, like I was mentioning, yeah. Yeah, and so I'm ex and I'm like shit. I'm schooling this guy on Ibogaine, and we're, he's doing it. I'm like, oh man. I wonder and what Amin's reaction was when he found out Danny died. Let me finish real quick. This, it's, uh, let me finish. <laughs> yeah, it up. Because, so, uh, this is dude. This is crazy shit. Yeah. So basically, he left, and it was like day three or four, and I was just uh, so Ibogaine is like <clears> this <throat> yellow. It's like this yellow stuff. I was still puking, my brains out, this yellow stuff. I was in bed. I was calling him. He's like, dude, that's not normal. I don't I don't know what's going on. I'm like, what do I do? He's like, well, do you have any opiates there? I'm like, yeah, I don't want to fucking take them, dude. I want to go. <laughs> he goes, just take a small amount because it's like your wife clean. And I'm, I'm like, okay. So I, I took a shower. I barely got in there. It, so I wasn't feeling like I did the first time. I was like puking 
nonstop bile up and it was this the yellow stuff it would not stop so i took so i'm not going to go I, i'm not going to how many oxys i used to take at one time i took a good amount at one time so i took one tenth of that okay i woke up in the hospital i died um wow my wife was right there with me she's like shortly after i started turning my blue my lips started turning blue she laid me down. Luckily, she's a doctor. Starts doing CPR. The ambulance get there. She calls 911. The ambulance get there in like six minutes. They have to give me Narcan three different times because my brain was like the virgin again, right? And people are going to be like, you're fucking stupid. Why would you do that? He told me to do that, to stop the severe side effects. He didn't know it was going to have. And I, it, I don't think it was just the oxy. It was a combination because I told him, I said, I'm having chest pains too really bad. And my wife was worried about that, not obviously because she's a heart doctor too. Um, so I was having severe chest pain and I didn't want to go to the ER because they're not going to understand like what I did. They're not, they're not even know what it is. They, you know, the doctors here, they don't know what that is. So I was like, I'll eventually go, you know, if I, I'm getting pretty bad. My kidneys are hurting really bad. I'm having chest pains. And I was telling him all this, he's like, this isn't normal and blah, blah, blah. And so I, 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 I OD because, it wipes your brain clean of all the opiates, and so. So how how much did you take of the uh, of the little of the opiate? Because he told you to take a little bit. What did you take? I took a, a one and a half pills, and I used to take. But how many milligrams pills. is that? How many milligrams is that? They're the blues. They're thirty milligrams. So, so you took forty milligrams of oxycodone. Yeah, like four, like forty five, and. I was used to taking about, you know, and, you know, uh, just just to give people, uh, uh, you know, for instance, who don't know, like after surgery, they, they'll usually give you two and a half or five milligram oxycodones, you know, to take every four or five hours. You took 40 milligrams in one You're shot. You're out of your mind. You're right. Before that, I was taking 30. I understand that. But you want, he said to take a small dose, the guy told you to take. That, well, that's what it was, small dose. He told, I was like, how much? He goes, like, take a pill, pill. He's like, how much were you taking before? I said, this much. He goes, he actually told me more, to take more than I actually did because my wife oh, was like, God. why don't you take a little less? Because yeah. you know the IBM oh, man, you're lucky to be alive. <laughs> yeah, holy Dude, shit! I've had so, so many. So it I've really done. does reset your receptors. As yeah. Well. Oh, God, it's, it's, Listen, I hope that. you never get hooked to fucking uh, drugs to have to go do all this bullshit again, dude. No, when I got off, I got off. Like you know, after that, that that, that treatment didn't work, and I told him, I said, dude, I'm not like you know, I'm not like like upset because you've been doing it and it's been working with people, but I'm gonna be honest. You're not equipped at all to deal, and you don't, you have no clue what you're doing with this. 